What's going on guys? Today I'm featuring a fire cape guide by Geza Killer. He sent me his guide on YouTube and I liked it so much I offered to upload it on my own YouTube channel because I'm sure any of you guys interested in getting a fire cape will find this video extremely useful. If you want to watch the whole guide right through that's fine but there's also a contents page here just in case you want to skip to any specific part. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy. His channel link will be in the description. So to start this guide off, the way that you get to the fire caves is to use a charge glory and teleport to Karamja. When you get there, you will need to run west until you reach some rocks. Go down to the cave and then go through the only entrance there. Then simply run west until you see a banker and also the entrance to the fire caves. The stats that I recommend when going through the fight caves is a minimum of 70 range, 45 defense, and a must of 43 prayer. The reason why you need 43 prayer is because it is impossible to do jad without the range and magic defensive, defensive prayers. Also, melee helps when fighting the melee monsters, which I will talk about later in this guide. For your inventory, I suggest you have one similar to this. Two range bots to boost your hits on the monsters and especially for Jad. One prayer and all because it makes it much easier to fight Jad as you won't have to worry so much about prayer. And then finally seven brews and 18 super stores. You will need much more super stores than Saradman brews no matter what your combat level is. Because you will pretty much be using prayer all the time in the fight caves. This inventory suits my stats perfectly. However if you find that you run out of Saradman brews then I would advise taking anywhere from seven Saradman brews up to eleven or less if you're in max gear. As my stats are 99 range, 99 prayer, and 75 defense, I tend to bring only 7 Saradon brews, which I don't usually finish anyway. Also, using a divine means I don't need to restore as much health as maybe others would. This is the gear that I use in the fight caves. Although, the gear that you use completely relies on your wealth and stats. The only upgrade from this gear is Pernix, but as I don't have 80 defense I can't wear it. That doesn't really matter though, as I can do Jad in this gear without too much hassle. The Avas Accumulator is a must for the fight caves. If you don't have one, you will lose a lot of bolts, and therefore a lot of money. I use Enchanted Diamond Bolts because they consistently hit, and they have an awesome range strength of plus 105. Alternatively, you could use other bolts such as Ruby or Broad Bolts, if you can't afford Diamond, but you should try to get through the fight caves as fast as possible, so it really is worth it to try and get some diamond bolts. Some people suggest using broad bolts up to Jad and then switching to diamond bolts at Jad, but I wouldn't advise it because that would waste an inventory space which could be used for another potion. And the reason why I have so many bolts is because I like to play safe. Imagine if you got to Jad and then ran out of bolts, that would really suck. So take a thousand bolts to be safe, that will be plenty. And another obvious upgrade to this gear is to instead of having a rune crossbow and region bracelet like I have, instead have a chaotic crossbow and barrier's gloves. But as I haven't got enough tokens to get a chaotic crossbow and I haven't done recipe for disaster, I cannot get either. And if you can't quite afford Glaven boots, then have ranger boots instead. You should still find it quite easy to get through the fight caves. And then obviously most people can't afford a divine, so instead I would say either a dragon fire shield or better yet, an unholy Zamorak book. But if you really can't afford any of this setup, not even the Archer's Ring, then this next setup that I'm about to show you is perfect for you. So this really is the cheapest gear that I can think of to be able to get you through the fight caves and actually get a fire cape. With this army you'll find it extremely difficult to complete Jad, so in my opinion maybe you should start trying to make a bit more cash so you can buy better armor and gear uh, to do Jad a lot easier. Unless you're a complete beast at Jad and a beast at switching, and you're a bit like Wook16, then go for it. But otherwise, yeah, try to save up some money and get better gear. This is the final setup that I would recommend for the fight caves. This setup is probably the one that the majority of you guys will use, because you're not rich enough to have the more expensive gear, but yet you have more money than someone who would have to buy the very cheap gear. The reason for the Carol's top is that it gives a high magic defense bonus, which could be very handy at Jad. Then the Varric Skirt is good for defense bonuses in general, and also the Varric Helm gives a prayer bonus and, yet again, good defense bonuses in general.
Now moving on to the monsters. The first monster that you will encounter in the fight cave is the Tuzki, level 22. I don't know how to pronounce it, but basically it's an orange bird that appears very often and can be very annoying. What it does is for every hit that it does on you, it will drain 10 of your prayer. And it does also drain your prayer points even if it doesn't actually conflict damage on you. Therefore, try to kill these monsters as quick as you can. The next monster is the Tuzkek, level 45. For this monster, you won't really have to worry too much because you'll be using range, but for example, if you were using melee, then it would deal 10%, 10 damage every time you hit it with melee. But don't worry, these creatures are really easy to kill. However, if you do have bad defense, then they might hit you occasionally, but you won't have to worry too much. When you kill the Tuzkek, level 45, it will split itself up into two miniature versions of itself, level 22. These things are really easy to kill, but they can be an annoyance, so just try to get them out of the way as quick as possible. The next monster that you will be facing is level 90 called Toxil. Yet another stupid name. Well done, Jagex. This monster, other than Jad, will be the one that you will have to be the most careful of. This is because it will use range and can hit constant 200s on you if you don't have the range protection prayer on. And it can also switch to use melee, and it can hit you fairly high with that if you get close enough. This is a level 180 monster called YT Measure Cut, which uses melee and can hit really high with it. You shouldn't have to worry about praying against it though, because it is easy to trap at a safe spot, which I'll explain more about later in this guide. Then comes a level 360 called Ketzek, which uses a very strong magic attack, which you have to be protecting mage against the whole time, otherwise it can one-hit you. And you also have to be careful about getting too close to it, otherwise it can hit you 600s with melee. Then obviously comes the Tusktok Jad, which is the hardest monster out of them all. I'll be explaining how to deal with him a little bit later on in this guide. Finally, the last monster that you will have to deal with is the Whitey Hercut. These monsters are otherwise known as healers, and that is fairly self-explanatory. Basically, they heal Jad. They will continue to spawn unless you have them trapped, so they can be very annoying. And they can also rapidly hit you with melee. So when you first enter the fight caves, there is literally a safe spot right in front of you. It's northeast of the fight caves, and this is actually my favourite one. Not just because it looks like the Italy Rock or a boot, but actually because it's the easiest place to trap monsters, and there's a little stump where you can do it, and you can trap monsters anywhere around that boot. Of course, there are other safe spots around the fight cave, but this is my favourite. And you shouldn't have to use any other safe spot during your time in the fight caves. And if you, if you guys aren't sure on how to trap monsters in safe spots, then just watch what I'm doing now. It's very simple, and you won't really have to use safe spots until about wave 15 when the big lizard-like looking creatures, the whitey murkots, come. And they're very easy to, to trap, as they're really big and very slow. So now moving on to the different waves. Before I start, I forgot to mention that if you die at any point, you don't lose anything. You will just be placed back outside the fight cave with Tokla as a reward for your efforts. Anyway, back to the waves. I won't be saying what monsters spawn on every wave, but I will be telling you the waves that are important and that you will need to remember in order to survive up to Jad. So let's get started. For most of the waves in the fight cave, you will be able to tell when a new monster is about to come. When you see two of the same monster, that means that a different type of monster should spawn the next wave. For example, when two of the, dra of the prayer draining birds come, which is on wave 2, then that means that a Tuztek will spawn the next round. Then, when you see two Tuzteks, that means the next wave there will be a Toxil, which is the ranger, who will spawn the wave after that. You don't really need to worry about these waves before the whitey Mershkots, otherwise known as Melias, come. All you have to remember is that when you see a ranger, then protect range. It's really that simple. However, you will need to start concentrating at wave 15, which takes about 10 minutes to get to. At wave 15, this is when the meleeers start to come, so remember to use the safe spots that I showed you and you should be fine. Just continue fighting until you reach wave 30, when you will see the two meleeers. This is the wave before the Ketzek, otherwise known as Mages come. Don't worry, just stay relaxed, kill the first meleeer, and then when you almost have killed the second, put on your Protect from Magic Prayer. You will have to leave that prayer on all the way until you get to Jad from now on. As I explained earlier, the Ketzek can one hit you with its magic attack, and it can also hit 600s with melee. Your prayer from now on 
is going to start to drain very quickly. So you will need to watch your prayer and use restore pots when you need to. Also, it's a good idea to start using your ranging pots because as your prayer is being drained rapidly, you will want to get through the waves fast without running out of supplies. Don't use prayer renewals until later waves. Then from here, it is a straight road to Jad. I will warn you that going through the fight cave is very time consuming and Jad will only take a minute or two. Another thing is, if you make it to Jad, then that means that you can get a fire cape. If you die at Jad, don't think that you can't, that you don't have the right stats to do it, because you do. You just have to stay relaxed, and it's all about the switching. When you get to the end of wave 62, pot up and prepare for Jad. Take a deep breath and stay calm. On wave 63, Jad will come, and this is how you kill him. As you will be using range, you won't have to worry about Jad's melee attack, but you should still be cautious. If you accidentally run into Jad, he can hit a max of 980, whereas with, with range and magic attack, he can hit up to 970. So basically, he can one-hit you if you misclick. What you have to do for Jad is switch prayers between protect from range and protect from magic, accordingly to what Jad's attack style is. It's very useful to know the sounds of Jad's attacks, because as soon as you reach wave 63, Jad will start to attack you without you knowing where he is. This is the sound that Jad makes when he is using his range attack. It's difficult to describe, but Jad's range attack kind of sounds like he's stomping his feet, which is actually what the animation is doing, so that's very helpful. And this is what Jad's magic attack sounds like. It sounds like a sort of sparkly sound, and it's very distinctive. The animation of Jad when he is using his range attack is, as I said before, Jad stomping his front two feet. When you hear this and see this, protect from range as quick as you can. His magic attack animation is Jad tilting his head back, which then produces a fireball, which you should be able to see very clearly. When you see and hear this attack, swish to protect from magic as quick as you can. When you are halfway to killing Jad, then the healers will arrive. You want to get them off Jad as fast as you can, before they will heal him before they can heal him to full health. You also want to be focusing on Jad's attacks while trying to get the healers off him. Watch how I do it. Move a few steps, wait until Jad is his attack, and then get a healer off him. Do this one at a time. Continue this process until you have all the healers off him, and then try to get the healers in a straight line following you so that only a couple of them can hit you at one time. If you have all of the healers on you, and they can kill you very fast depending on your defense level. When you feel happy with the healers, just finish Jad off until you get your fire cape. Don't feel too bad if you die. Even if you do die, for bullshit reasons, just pick yourself up and try again another day. It's all fine. And that's the end of my Jad guide for 2011 and 2012. I hope it will help you all get your fire capes. And if you could like this video, I would greatly appreciate it. Because it has taken me many hours to make, so if you could spend two seconds of your time just liking it, then uh, it'd be like a late birthday present to me, and uh, as my birthday was on Monday. Also, please favorite this video, not just for me, or for my benefit, but also for yours, because if you ever forget something in the future that this guide has taught you, then you can quickly find it through your favorites. If you guys are watching this video from a different channel, then please subscribe to me for guides like this, vlogs, PK commentaries, PVM videos and many more. If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comment section below, as well as your unique comments. Also remember to add me as a friend on YouTube and in game of course. If you haven't already seen my flip merchant merchanting guide or fletching guide, then the annotations to them will be on the screen now. I hope you all have an amazing Christmas and I will see you all next time. Peace.